Did you ever think you would train your employees using virtual reality or augmented reality? Well, me neither. It seems so Jetsons, yet it is here. It has entered the collision industry. And you can not only train your technicians, your estimators, your CSRs, your paint department, your parts department, and everything in between, but you can allow them to retain the information at over 640% more than traditional training. Is that mind-blowing or what? You've got to stay tuned and get more information because this one's good today. Welcome to Body Bangin', your podcast for all things body. Auto body, that is. And now, introducing Body Bangin's host, Mickey Woods of Mickey Woods Marketing. Mickey is a former Auto Collision Center owner and is now a marketing and business development expert to shops across the globe. Welcome today. We have Beth Rudder here with me. Super excited to have her. She is a star in her own right. She has been in the auto body industry for years, been managers of Caliber Collision Centers, and also for some small and large independent body shops. So besides all of her accolades, she is now working with Tradybot. And when I came across Beth on LinkedIn, I saw some of her posts about the virtual reality and augmented reality training that Tradybot offers. And I was immediately intrigued and thought, oh my gosh, this is where our industry is going. It's so cutting edge. But is it really, Beth? <laughs> is it really <laughs> so cutting edge? <laughs> Absolutely it is. For the collision repair industry, it is out there. It is so far outside our comfort zone that uh, we look at it and go, mm, uh, not yet, not yet. Um, yeah. For the rest of the world, virtual reality technology has been around for decades. Um, if you can imagine, the first flight simulator was built in 1929. Wow. Uh, when they recognized way back then that it made more sense to train on the ground than uh, take the expensive gear up when you weren't fully checked out on all, all the systems, right? And, you know, hundreds, literally hundreds of other industries use it on a regular basis. Walmart, Verizon, BP, uh, Petroleum, Kentucky Fried Chicken, oh, KFC. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> right? They all use it to some degree because it has value, right? Collision repair industry is just seeing it now. Um, you know, the, the car makers and, and anyone who's involved with robotics and production and that, and that sort of stuff um, is making it more readily apparent. It's in our field, if you will. Um, and so we're, we're just starting to see it. And wow. Yeah. What a change. Yes. Well, it's interesting that it's something that we in the auto body industry feel like it's so like we were, we had talked about the Jetsons, you know, when we, when I called you the other day, it seems like so far out there. What am I just going to snap my, it's like, I dream of genie and I'm just going to do the little nose thing and boop, you know, appear somewhere or something it's here. And we feel like it's so new because for us it is new, but like you said, it's been around for such a long time. So I would really like all of the owners and managers and whoever is on the call right now to make sure that you're realizing that this is coming. It's been here. It is now entering our field and our industry. So you can jump on board or you can get left in the dust <laughs> is basically how I feel about it because it is coming like a train. Uh, you know, we talk about the same thing with, with other things that are coming across with autonomous vehicles. And we heard about ADAS way before it even came and we knew it was coming. Sure. This is the same. So here we are, this is cutting edge technology for the auto body industry. So tell us how exactly does Tradybot work for your shops? Well, so that's kind of a, that's kind of an interesting question. First of all, um, you know, even though it is coming like a freight train and it's going to be here, whether you accept it or not, it's a lot like uh, using your iPhone, right? I still know people who have flip phones, right? Mm -hmm. And they're still able to communicate with the world. The question is how effectively, right? So the collision repair industry now has the ability to, and, and the pandemic has really kind of sped things up. It threw everything up in the air and, and uh, said, 
uh, wait, hold my beer. We're going to, we're going to change <laughs> stuff. Right. And all right. especially um, in our, our, co- our career collision um, universities and, and tech colleges and stuff, all of a sudden they couldn't actually train anybody in person. So how do you train welding over, you know, a zoom call? Good well, point. You can't, technically you can't, but you can do it in virtual reality. And the science behind it um, makes it so that, you know, you, you understand that the, the training that you uh, learn in the virtual world is completely usable in the real world because the brain pathways that you build in the virtual world are the same ones you're going to use in the real world, right? The muscle memory is exactly the same. Yeah. And I think the place of holding a welder and cutting a bead, nothing takes that place or being in a spray booth and setting up the vehicle and spraying toner on a panel, nothing takes that place. But what if you could do all of that training, um, the process part of the training before the person stepped in the booth? Imagine how much toner you would save, how many Mm -hmm. um, oops uh, you would save with your young technicians not understanding uh, the, the nature of PPE and how volatile these hazardous materials are that they are that they're working with, right? Uh, you miss and you skip all of those things until the student or the the entry level technician really has a good understanding of what they're doing, right? Yes. And then the ramp up to being proficient is much quicker, right? It's much quicker because you've already got that background. You've got the confidence in the process. You know what you're doing. You know the steps that you need to take in order to produce the the outcome. Then when you're actually doing it, it's a short transition from, okay, what I practiced to what I'm doing. And the cool thing about the technology is that you practice it as often as you want until you're proficient. So for one time, in the history of the world in collision repair industry, we focus on competency-based learning, not going to a, a certification, sitting in um, a conference room for <laughs> half a day and then spraying for half a day. Right. And then you're certified because that's typically been the process up until now. Yes. And then you get back to the shop and then you realize you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> and then the mistakes happen. <laughs> right. Why am I getting die back? I- it doesn't make sense. It's, it doesn't work. This paint system doesn't work. And let's be real. All of the paint systems that we have on the market today that are mainstream, we're not talking stuff in, in spray bombs, but mainstream, it all sticks to panels, right? Mm-hmm. But PPP has a different process than BSF. They have a different process than AXO right. and, and SPEES and, and Exalta and, 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 right? And it's just a process. What if you just learn the process first? Yeah. Well, it's incredible talking about it because I know it's not just for entry level. It's for these new, as my whole thing is most of the people in the auto body industry have been in the auto body industry, but as we have these new vehicles coming on the scene and new technology coming on the scene, we don't, we, as people working in the industry, don't know these vehicles, even the people that made the vehicles don't totally know them. So if there's a way to train on these and make the screw ups during training to totally fully understand. And these are guys that have been doing it for a really long time, but now they have to repair a brand new vehicle with brand new equipment, brand new technology. Now they can do it safely train on it before they even lay their hands on something. I mean, that's incredible. Absolutely. And now we're kind of, we're kind of mixing technology. Extended reality goes from QR codes at the very basic to full on immersed technology where you're taken into a different environment than you're actually really in. Right. And, um, you know, entry level technicians typically get put on the, the simpler tasks, if you will. Well, a simple task in a collision repair facility typically is just tearing down a vehicle, taking it apart so that it can be prepared for repair. Right. Well, on an electric vehicle, how you handle that battery is critical, right? If you don't handle it properly, you're going to kill yourself. And the the thing with with our industry is it's changing so fast, right? Totally. Crazy fast. I haven't been in a shop in five years, 
And I would not feel comfortable writing a full and complete repair plan for a vehicle because there's so much that's different now, right? There's so yes. much that's different. But that electric vehicle has has come into the industry in between a technician who started out 30 years ago and where he is right now, right? So the knowledge that he's had up until now has worked until now, right? And the electric vehicle is new to him, just like it's new to the entry-level technician. Yes. So you're absolutely right. It's not just for people who are new to the industry. It's people who haven't experienced that particular technology. And it's not like you have to train and train and train. You know, the the technicians who have been in the industry a long time, they catch this stuff so fast. Mm -hmm. They're they're one of the most intelligent groups of individuals I've ever met on the planet. These guys think in 3D, right? I'm a linear thinker. I'm a linear and I'm part of me. I'm visual, right? These guys have it in their head. They're rotating it 3D and they're repairing it in their mind before they even touch the car, right? And so this technology fits in with how they think, right? It, it's it's a less of a visual process leading us, you know, reading a set of instructions, do this, do this, do this, and more of a kinesthetic process where you're you're seeing how to do it, you're hearing how to do it, and you're actually able to follow along and move stuff in, in real time. And, and it just gives you that it's so much faster. It really is. It's a faster way to train. And cycle time is, is like a real killer in our industry. <laughs> yes. Right? We got to be fast. But yes. we got to be safe too. Right. So I feel like we're talking very broad, like the concept of this augmented reality training and virtual reality training. So to break it down for everybody listening, that's like this, Beth, this sounds amazing. This sounds great. I love it. What does that actually look like? So I'm a shop owner and I come to you and say, Beth, that sounds wonderful. What does that look like in my shop? Do I have to have a separate little room where they can go into it? Do they have equipment that they put on? Do you provide that? Does it come with the software? I mean, break it down like just so I we can all visualize and totally get like because unfortunately we can't be with you and try it out on our own, which would be amazing. Drives drives me crazy, but the cool thing about it is this is not rocket science. This is just data. All right. Imagine an Xbox. You've got an Xbox. You want to play a game on it, but you don't have it yet. So you download the game. Now you have yes. the game. Right. And it's it's in your suite of games that you've already downloaded. So there's the games in your Xbox. Now you can play different games. Right. That's how it works. That's it. Uh, we use Oculus uh, technology um, for the headset. We use an Intel Nook a processor, which comes with a whole thing, doesn't need Wi-Fi connection, which is why it makes it so useful in a, in a collision facility environment. Right. Yes. And, and you put it on, you can train whenever you want, but that's the virtual reality piece of it, right? You would have a specific training offering that your company wants you to learn. For example, um, imagine a certification, a certified network, What if all of Caliber wants all of their stores to be Ford certified all at once? Well, up until now, it's impossible. You you can't be certified all at once. But what if your your, your technicians that need to test out on the aluminum portion of the Ford certification can do that virtually? They do all the work virtually. Sometimes that takes weeks, right? Mm. There's a lot of information to learn. What if they do that virtually and then get tested out at a, a separate location where they, they test out on the process and they're done, right? The process is so much faster. So for the virtual reality, you've got, you've got a processor, you've got a headset, and you've got a couple of handhelds where you can spray stuff or weld stuff or, or whatever it is you happen to be doing. That's just in the technician or the technical part of training because it's virtual, whatever you can imagine you can achieve. Mm. So any, any type of process that you have in the collision repair center can be trained on parts processes. For example, you can train on that. If you had, if you had a central location and you, you were small MSO had 15 to 20 stores and you wanted to change your parts procurement process, right? 
it's an easy, it's an easy way. You don't just send out a list of instructions here, do this. You can send out a couple of uh, headsets around, have everyone train out and be fully scripted and confident in the process moving forward. Well, parts is, is a real, um, is a real profit center in a collision repair facility. If you if you miss management, water just leaks out the door. Yes, yes. Right? So it's just a it, it's just a, a more intelligent way to approach training. It's a more comfortable way for learners to learn. They retain it. Something like six hundred and forty percent greater retention in virtual training than in live training. Wow. Mostly because it's there's science behind it. It's it's not it's not woo woo stuff. It's not gimmicky at all. It's, yeah. it's science behind how our, pro, our brain processes information. That's right, neural science. When, when you have to perform in front of a bunch of other people to to prove that you know what you're doing, it's stressful. Yeah. And it's, even if you have all the information, it's hard to recall it and regurgitate it, right? But right. when you learn it in a very calm in environment and you learn it to competency level, the confidence level goes way up and with confidence goes performance. Right. Yes. And it, it's, uh, it's interesting because up until now you've had to have performed it X amount of number of times until you have the confidence to be able to do it again. But now you perform in it in, in virtual reality so that the, the actual testing out of the performance in real world, you don't need to have done it in the real world 300 times. You only have to do it maybe two or three to get right. fully proficient to where you need to be. Well, and you can keep doing it if Absolutely. you are. I mean, why not? It's not like, oh, we have to wait for the next vehicle to come in to try that out again. I mean, you just, <laughs> <laughs> you can keep hanging out. Well, well what, right. You no. Know. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but what about uh, pain application? Yes. I mean, is there, there's, they spend millions and millions of dollars on on paint research and development and 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 on on such intricacies intricacies really is like things like metamerism and flip and and how colors affect other colors how toners when you add them add warmth or add uh, coolness to a color right mm -hmm. what if when you change a whole process you come out with a brand new line uh, Glasser just did this by the way. Um, but now you need to train people on it because you can't apply it the same way you did the last product right. that everyone's familiar with using. Right. What do you typically do? Well, you send it out to all your stores and you get people to try it. That's expensive. Yes. <laughs> expensive. And you create obstacles for yourself to overcome when a technician isn't fully, they don't fully embrace the new technology and say, I don't like that. I'm going to stick with the old mm -hmm. stuff. Well, especially if they're applying it incorrectly and then they don't know why it's not working properly. Yeah. Well, they think they do. That's yes. the problem. Yes. And it's hard to argue with that. It's hard to yeah. argue with somebody who's fully convicted in their belief. Yeah. Right. But this takes the, the, the confrontation out of new information. Yes. It's data. I love There's that. no emotion attached to this. Nobody cares how you feel about it. It's just new information. Right. right. Learn the new information and use it to your benefit or right. don't and continue to use your flip phone. It's completely, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll either come, you'll either move forward and grow or you'll, you'll stay behind and be moderately effective. The problem in the collision repair industry is that being moderately effective means that people are getting back into vehicles that may or may not be fully safe. Yes. And I think that's what, at the end of the day, it really comes down to. How confident are you letting your team continue doing repairs, assuming they're being done correctly or paint on the vehicle, whatever. And we don't know, you can't be there to constantly be watching and monitoring, but at least if they've undergone training processes like this, you know, you're putting a technician out there that is ready to go. And there's going to be, I'm sure a little, like you're saying a little learning curve, because there's going to be an art to things, but for the most part, They've got it. And I, and correct me if I'm wrong on these statistics, but I think it's that people retain information 10% just by seeing something 30 to 40% by seeing and hearing, and then 90% by seeing, hearing and doing. Absolutely. Which yeah. Makes what you guys, what, you know, what your company and Tradybot is doing so important. We're putting tech rather than having a technician or somebody at a training being like, Hey, 
watch this and they're just watching. Well, there's 10%. They retain 10%. Now you just yes. imagine all that money you just spent sending that technician to travel to wherever they had to go, take yep. the class, put them up in a hotel. Granted, you may still have to do that to some degree for our certifications and whatnot, but imagine the time and the money you can save plus all the redos that aren't coming back because they didn't do it right. Plus you've got safety because you're putting a customer in a vehicle that has been safely repaired. Right. And let's be real. Nobody ever died from an, an, a bad paint job, right? <laughs> Maybe emotionally. <laughs> right. Perhaps. Yeah. However, you know, um, materials costs in a collision repair facility is a huge profit center. It's also a huge cost center, right? Mm -hmm. So now you, you have, um, and there's a couple of things that I, I wanted to touch on, not just how efficiently you can actually uh, produce a vehicle, right? Because speed that you have that vehicle go through the process, the amount of materials you use, uh, how you use them, you know, paint booth management, all those things come into effect. If you're mismanaging that process, money is, you know, bleeding out your front door without you even realizing it. For sure. And the other piece to that is that our technicians are kinesthetic learners. They're in a hands-on job, a career, mm -hmm. because that's how they're comfortable. They're mm -hmm. not sitting behind a desk writing stuff because that's not how they're comfortable. They're comfortable moving and learning by doing things, not yes. learning about it or hearing about it. Yes. So let's go back to how we typically train people. We sit them in a conference room, especially uh, paint technicians. We sit them in a conference room and we make them listen for half a day. <laughs> I've been in these trainings. I've done it myself, right? And then the other half of the day is when everybody wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> they actually get to suit up. They get to prep the panel. They get to spray the new product and see how it works, right? Yes. That's where the, that's all the, that's where the glory is. That's where they learn yeah. everything. So you've effectively wasted half a day. Now, granted, they do get to come home with shiny new binders, with brand new papers <laughs> that put in those binders. Yes. So think about the insanity of a paint company spending millions and millions on uh, research and development and perfecting the coatings process only to send their technicians home with binders and glossy pages that go in those binders. Right. And they still put up posters I don't know the last time you were in a in a paint room at a collision facility, but they all have the posters that last show week. it had this toner. Yep. To make it a little bit more brown. Yep. yep. It's like all that money. When <laughs> you know, now we're kind of getting into the augmented reality piece of it. All that money could be, you know, download an app and call it up on the take a picture of the the label on the toner can and all that information's right there. Yeah. Shows exactly. So it feels because it's such a shift in what we're used to doing and it feels so big and almost intangible. How tangible is this for the mom and pop shop for the guy that owns a couple facilities? How, I mean, is this something that these, that the little guys are doing or is it just mainly right now, the big guys, what are you seeing? It's a little bit of both. The technology has been adopted tentatively. And part of it's because we're in a global pandemic where everyone is concerned about what's going to happen next. Yeah. Right? I think we, the, the, the word on the street doesn't feel like we're solid. Now we're on the upswing. It feels like we're waiting for the other shoe to shoe drop. drop. Yes. So that's part of it. We're, we're unwilling to adopt new things in this sort of environment. And honestly, it's the perfect time to do it because we all have the same rug ripped out from our under us, right? We all landed in the middle of pandemic going, holy cow, what just happened? And yeah. we're, we're not done with it yet. Right. And so it's a perfect time to make change yes. uh, as far as I'm concerned. But right. it, it really, it's the misperception is exactly the way you stated it. It's not intangible. It's not big and huge and, and unwieldy. Everybody understands what an Xbox is. Mm -hmm. Everybody bought one for their kids. And I guarantee they've spent more on that Xbox and all the games they've downloaded on it than one of these, you know, uh, virtual reality consoles cost, right? Especially when you can get more than one learner on it, right? And 
you know, you don't buy one unit per person, you buy one unit and then you have a couple of subscriptions and then your whole team has access to it. Love it. Green, you know, and you can train whatever you like. You can train your CSR uh, for customer service. You can try, you can train, uh, you know, estimate writing and, and such. So it, it all depends on the scale of the operation. One unit will do the trick. You've got three or four stores, you send it around. Um, it would be more challenging if you had 15 or 50 stores, mm-hmm. right? You would probably need to ramp up greater than that. Yes. But as for the augmented reality, it's a downloadable app, right? You have the information on your phone and you access it with digital overlay. It's not it's not crazy uh, Jetson stuff. A lot of us have the wine app where you can <laughs> call up the information on the wine just by taking a picture of the label. That's augmented reality. And we have overlay technology that allows you to uh, look at expanded information while you're looking at the vehicle. So is the software within the system, let's say, you know, somebody wants to get it and start out and do some CSR or estimator training. Is that training software already in the system? Or is that something that they need to create with somebody on your team um, to specify for their particular training style? How does that work? It's purpose built. It really is. There is no one size fits all. Okay. Um, one approaches customer service uh, a little differently. Ultimately, the outcome is the same, right? They yes, want to have customers, but everybody does it in a different way. Everyone right. wants to train and, and approach it a different way. Um, Walmart has 17,000 units around the globe where they train all of their customer service people before they ever hit the floor. And the reason is because their learners come from so many different walks of life and they want to protect their brand. That's ultimately what it's about. Walmart needs to look like Walmart and they need all of their customers to go into Walmart and get treated the same way at every different, every, every Walmart around the yes, world. Correct. Well, that's impossible to achieve when you've got a training team, maybe Walmart's, you know, probably got six to 10 people instead of just one. Yes. <laughs> right? You can't, you can't be consistent. Right. And and so they have units all over the world where anyone can go in and learn a specific module at whatever pace they want. Right. So uh, Walmart trains different than Verizon and they chain uh, they train different than Kentucky Fried Chicken. I think I mentioned this before. Yes. Kentucky Fried Chicken trains their fry cooks in virtual reality before they even get on the floor. And it's simple. It's just data. It's not, there's not rocket science to <laughs> cooking chicken in hot oil. But well, there's if KFC can data. do it, we can do it. <laughs> yes, but there's some right. safety issues, right? And when you're brand new at it, the likelihood of you getting burned by hot oil goes up really high. So for workers sure. for new employees goes through the roof, right? Yeah. You don't want your employees to be hurt. What if you want to take care of them? Right. What well, if you want to make sure that they stick around for a while because continually training new people is expensive, right? So you invest in what they need to know to be successful. And then as they become more successful, you develop more training that allows them to progress, right? Yes. So they work, so they work with you. So the shop would, so I'm the owner, I call you. Yes. Back to your question. Beth, I yeah. I'm going to loop back around. <laughs> so I'm interested. I yes. need TradyBot. Then I work with your team to create the programs for my specific shop and my specific needs. And right. then I have the tools. I mean, probably people listening can go to tradybot.com. There's a picture on the homepage. I think it is with the guy with the yeah. headpiece over the eyes and he's holding a couple yeah. things. So you kind of get an idea of what it looks like. And then once the software is in, like you're saying, it's just it's almost like playing a video game, but obviously very specific to the industry. So, you know, your kids are playing video games. It's kind of fun. I would think to go train on something like that. I think it, it I it's think a lot of fun. Super stoked to go do that versus go sit in a classroom. I would. Well, and you do it on your own time and it is a lot of fun. And if you're even a remotely a teeny bit competitive, um, never, you- no, not me. Me either. <laughs> yeah. But imagine, if you will, yeah. somebody being competitive. Yeah. You get in and you get suited up, and you realize you have four minutes to paint a panel, and you you put primer on it, and you wait, and you flash it off, and you put your base coat and your clear coat, 
and you get your stats back and your coverage is mediocre, right? Mm. You put way too much clear on the top of the panel. You miss the edges. Yes. And you get a, a A, B, and a C, for example. Okay. And you look at it and go, I can do better than that. Yes. I, I am not a C painter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Right. No, do this again. Yeah. And uh, it's a little, it's a little addicting. And by the time you're done, you're good, right? Yeah. You're good at that process with, with whatever training and, and even inside the process itself. Um, we can customize how, how, it, how the details of it, for example, like a blend process, mm. uh, the, the, how you approach the panel sometimes can be different depending on, on how you want to train that particular module or even, um, you know, a blend specifically, but feather prime and block, for example, is another one. If you have a specific way you want it done for, for a particular product and that's, it's a fairly standard process. But I have encountered uh, several individuals who said, yeah, but can we do it a little this way? And I, I want to spend more time on this particular component. Mm -hmm. That's where we, we make the changes. And it, again, it's just data. You don't have to, you don't have to tell your trainers, okay, we're updating this information. You got your eight trainers in your, now they're in the conference room yes. and you can upload the information to them and hope they're effective uh, down the line training, uh, training their technicians. Right. Yeah. yeah, I I love I love 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 the idea of this, and it's exciting that it's coming our way, and it's here and it's available. It's available. Yeah. I mean, they can they could potentially call you right now and get started on something like this. Absolutely, and and it's not it. The sky's the limit. It really isn't as big and as crazy and as untouchable as as what people imagine it to be. You know, I'm I'm working with. Um, a coatings engineer in Trinidad. She has to train wow. individuals remotely to uh, take off material from metal structures and then apply corrosion protection. Obviously, corrosion protection is far more critical to the functioning of uh, a component than just putting you know, paint on. And, and some would argue that paint is the ultimate corrosion protection on a vehicle, right? Right, right? the chair is so... But we've had to develop new, we, we had to recreate the, her, her uh, structures, if you will, uh, in our virtual world so that, you know, her apprentices and the people she's training and they're far and wide um, can have access to what a good, you know, training is and what isn't because hands-on in this regard, imagine, imagine having to, to sand or to, um, they call it stripe coating uh, when they put on with a paintbrush over critical pieces, right? But there's a lot of nooks and crannies to those pieces. It's not right. just a flat fender, right? Yes. So, uh, you know, the sky's the limit really with what you can do with it. If you can imagine it, it can be done. And now you're not reliant on the guys that have been around for 30 years mm. to help bring in the new people, right? That's a, that's a lot of stuff. That's a stretch, honestly, yeah. because the the gentlemen technicians are, and females too have been in the industry for 30 years, have been in it that long because they like it to some degree, mm. right? Most of them don't feel like they're stuck there. Although I, I suspect an argument could be made that <laughs> yeah. but my point is that just because you're good at what you do doesn't make you a really good trainer. Mm -hmm. right? And why true. take up your best technician's time training an individual, right? Which typically is what happens in yeah. a pollution care facility. That's where we train our new people. Right. The, the guy that has been around the longest. Well, typically he's the most efficient, right? And it costs him money to slow down. That's right. The second that person comes off the job, you're losing money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the moment he's got to explain something twice or she, yeah. right? you're losing money. That's right. Well, speaking of money, what does this price range for TradyBot? I mean, what are, what would we be looking at? Hi, I'm Mickey from Mickey's Collision Center. I'm interested in TradyBot. <laughs> what, what kind of pricing is coming my way? <laughs> All right. So, um, the Trade Force VR console, which is what we call it is $10,000. Okay. And that comes with uh, the, the paint training, there's a basic welding, 
Metal welding and plastic welding training included in that as well. Custom customization for different trainings or additional trainings that you, you want to do is really based on just development hours required to complete that training. Right. right? And it, it really just depends on how complex a training you want to do. If, if um, it's something more simple, like a feather prime and block process, mm -hmm. um, if there's fewer development hours, it's fewer additional costs, right? Right. Okay. So that's where we get into the customization. And so then basically, once you have your $10,000 kind of base, then you can grow it from there yep. as you add in your modules and that kind of thing. I feel like $10,000 Beth for this is like a no brainer. The amount of money we spend yeah. getting certifications. Yeah. You have this welder for Audi, but you need that welder for Porsche. Oh, good. Now we have two totally different welders and you know, it's like, <laughs> if everything's well, so particular that that's true. and it doesn't take the place of needing those different welders it Audi still requires its welder but you will know why you can't use your mercedes uh rivet gun on your ford f-150 right. right right you'll know the difference between yes them. well point being i think we're used to just spending a lot of money when, especially for us shops trying to go after certifications and there's all these very specific things you have to buy, but you can't have this and you got to have that. So it's not like a one size fits all. So we're dumping money into things. And I like to think of it as we're investing money. We're putting money out to get the bigger return. I mean, if people are looking, it's kind of like with me, I do marketing. If you look at a marketer like me as an expense, you have the wrong perspective. Yes. I am, you know, marketing is an investment to bring money back to you. Same thing for the virtual reality training, the VR training. Absolutely. It's an investment of your money. You spend the money to save the money on all of the time, the wasted materials, the comebacks. So if you can look at it as an investment, like I said, if it was me, it's a no brainer. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess a lot of these guys and gals are going to have to get their hands on it and see it. But, uh, and I know that I'm very forward thinking, but it's coming and I'm sure you'll probably be once we can get into like SEMA and those kinds of shows, I'm sure you guys will be back so that people can actually pop on some goggles and check it out. Cause that right. Be and uh, we, we're planning on, uh, being at the British motor show in August. Right. And, and Yay. there's, you know, CIC tentatively is going to be in, uh, in just a couple of months, we're hopeful that that goes off in April in Phoenix. And that would be amazing. Exactly. Right. And it, it's the investment is, is critical on it. And this particular technology allows you to invest in not just all of those uh, pain points where you're, you're losing money, but your, your employees, right. The, yes. the retention um, not only for the employee, but the information that you're you're wanting them to learn is is so much better uh, when you when you invest in their learning and education. Yeah, and uh, you know, ICAR is working really hard to up level their training because, especially in the pandemic, they recognized really fast it was hard to get people into classes. Mm -hmm. Right, it was it was impossible there for a while, mm -hmm. and it's not as effective as they need it to be. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, it, the change is coming, right? The growth is optional. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so true. So if we have people listening or watching and they're interested and they want to ask you questions, how can they get a hold of you? Well, my, uh, my email is easiest, right? Beth.redder at tradybot.com or tradybot, you know, on our, on the website, LinkedIn. I'm, I feel like I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I found you. You're yes. out there. And I'll yeah. put in the description all your contact information. So if anybody wants to get a hold of you, they can ask further questions, see how maybe this would actually look to put in your shop and get started. And why wait for it to come? Why not be one of the pioneers and get going? So while everybody else is playing catch up, you're already good to go. Agreed. Yes. Very well said. That's our position. Okay. And there are organizations out there who are running at uh, warp speed, catching up to understanding this technology and implementing. So 
uh, bless their souls, they're building the bridges, they're crossing it for their mm. organizations. And mm. uh, when the dust settles, they will be a lot farther ahead than most. So yes, that's right. It's exciting. Well, now is the time. No need to wait. You've got best information. Uh, I'm going to put all the information down in the description. Super excited to have had you on, Beth. Tradybot is awesome. You're so knowledgeable and been so fun to talk with and get to know. Thank you. And, I, and I appreciate your, your uh, intelligent questions and your approach, <laughs> right? Because uh, you. we have to be open in the collision repair industry. And, and I find so much... Uh, of our conversation revolves around how it's been and how tough it's been. And, and it's just a breath of fresh air to be able to talk uh, to someone who is forward thinking and, and looks to the future and sees what else is out there and how, how to benefit our industry. Yeah, that's right. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Beth. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have some incredible topics and guests coming your way you will not want to miss. If you are watching on YouTube and don't want to miss the latest and greatest, you'll want to hit the bell after subscribing so you will get a pop-up each time a video podcast goes live. To our devoted fans, would you mind paying it forward and sharing this little gem with someone else you think may benefit from it? Much love from all of us here at Body Bangin', all things Autobody.